everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday and welcome to part two of the Shorts for Everybody Sew Along. Um, I'm kind of excited because this is giving me an excuse to really play with my own pattern and I did a, um, a crotch length slash camel toe video on Tuesday so if you missed that be sure to check that out because that was one of my um, processes of, you know, fitting my shorts. And then I, okay, so I, I'm happy with the way my shorts fit, except they're too snug all the way around. So um, when I traced my final pattern and made a, a neat copy, I added a little bit of ease to the side seams and the inseams. And um, now I think I'm pretty happy with um, my shorts pattern. And I cut it out and sewed it together, and it fit really well. Hi, Francine. Hi, Mary. Welcome, ladies. Um, Francine, I saw your email with your new pictures. I'm very happy that that's working out better now that we took up all that extra. Um, Francine sent me pictures of her muslin. Um, and it's, it's starting to look pretty good. Hi, Judy. Welcome. All right, so what we're going to do today is I am going to show you how to draft a front pocket and then make all the pieces. And I think I have showed this before, but I just want to show you again. So if you want to have a front pocket on your, oh, excuse me, sorry. If you want to have a front pocket on your shorts, you can. Um, and I'll just talk about different um, front pocket openings, and we'll we'll talk about that. We'll draft the pieces. Then what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to um, prep your pieces after you cut them out, because next week we sew. Okay. And of those of you who are joining, maybe a little bit late and you haven't fit your pattern yet, I am going to be doing a second Zoom pants fitting, uh, shorts fitting, I mean, on Sunday at 11 o'clock um, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So if you need more help fitting your shorts or if you missed the first shorts Zoom fitting and you'd like to join me for that on Sunday, please do join me. Um, we had a lot of fun last Sunday. We got, a lot of, um, we got a lot of good fitting going on in there, so that was kind of fun. Um, so make sure you join me for that if, you know, if your pattern still needs some work. Hi, Kim. Welcome. Um, and I just want to say that um, I'm having a little pattern giveaway contest. And it's because my Instagram finally made it to a thousand followers on Instagram. This is so exciting. I mean, I've been trying to get my Instagram going for so long now. I can't even remember when I started it, but it's been creeping up, and now I have a thousand subscribers. So I'm super excited about that. So I'm going to have a giveaway, and you have two chances to win. Because what what you can do is if you go over to my Instagram and um, find today's post and comment on what your either your first J Stern design project was, or if you haven't sewn a J Stern design project yet what your um, favorite pattern would be um, to sew. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to put all of the, the number of comments into one of those random selector things online. My social media manager is doing this for me, but she will randomly pick a winner from Instagram. And then you also have a second chance to win a free pattern by um, commenting underneath this video what your first J Stern Design project was or what your favorite one would be or if you wanted to make one, what your next one will be. It really doesn't matter. Um, but get over there and comment. Um, and you have till Monday. And underneath the, the Instagram post, all the little particulars are there. But you have until Monday to comment and... Um, Oh, someone said, is the volume really low? Barbara, can you hear me? 
I have my mic right here. I hope it's it's okay. Um, hi, Jerry. Hi, Sally. Hi, Barbara and Kim. Hi, Eliz Eliza. Welcome. Okay, so that's my fun with having a pattern giveaway. So comment here and comment on my Instagram because then you'll have two chances to win. We're going to pick one winner from Instagram list and one winner from the YouTube list. So um, there you go. Judy said probably first pattern was happy pants. All right, Judy. Judy's kicking it off with a comment. All right, everybody comment on what their favorite or first J Stern Designs pattern is while you're here because then you'll be entered to win the free pattern giveaway and you can pick out whatever pattern you want. Um, but anyway, so do it here, do it at Instagram and then um, I'll feel like we're all celebrating my thousandth subscriber on Instagram. <laughs> all right, so here's what I wanna show you. I'm going to switch my view now. Um, all right, so here is my shorts and what you're going to notice is I took my sloppy copy which is my master pattern and I made a copy of it and that is super important because um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to design a front pocket right on the front leg and that's really my favorite way to design a front pocket because I can see the proportion and I can you know, I can draw right on here and then it doesn't get lost because we're going to draw all the pieces on this front leg and then you'll have it on here because um, you'll have the traced edges and then if you lose a piece, you can go back and retrace it. So this is sort of a safety for, um, you know, you design it on the front pocket, you'll have all the pieces noted on, I mean, um, you'll design it on the front leg and then you'll have all the pieces on there. So if you lose something, you'll have it. But remember, you don't want to do this to your master copy because you want to keep that as a like starting off point. And I just want to, before we get going, I want to talk about one more fitting thing. Um, Mary says, my first pattern was the free one named after your daughter. Oh, Mary um, sewed the Abbey dress. That was a very popular pattern. Um, Oh, Liza says, my first pattern was the shorts for everybody, but it won't be my last. Okay, thank you guys. Jerry did the happy pants. I'm so excited. It's always so fun to see what people think or what their favorite one was or what their first one was, so that's kind of fun. Um, now, I want to show you a picture of, in my whole process of fitting my shorts, um, I don't know if you remember this, but back last March, I went all the way to my friend Eric's house and we spent all day trying to get the perfect fitting pair of pants. And going there, I thought, oh, I'm going to work with Eric and I'm going to end up with this vision of zero wrinkles. And what ended up happening was I got really close. Okay, and I'm going to show you a picture of, um, I'm going to show you a picture of, how my back view looked when I fit my pants. And then I'm going to show you what happened when I cut out a shorts length version of those pants and sewed it together today. And what you're going to see is part of the frustration of fitting pants. Since I made that pattern, I lost 15, almost over 15 pounds now, closer to 20 pounds, and I lost inches places. So that pants pattern that fit me amazing is a mess now. And I just wanted to just to see what would happen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you here. This is my happy pants um, from March of last year, okay? And there are wrinkles there, but after many different, um, different pattern adjustments and things, we decided that this was the best. All of my horizontal balance lines are in fact horizontal to the floor. And um, I think what happens is you end up with some wrinkling because the from your bottom of your butt to your knee gets longer when you're walking around. So as you walk around, this smooths out because your leg gets a little longer in the back when your knee is bent. So that's what my pants look like 
last March. Now I want to show you a picture of what they look like when I sewed together shorts um, today. Let me see if I find the right the right ones here. Hold on. So you can see this now looks like a flaming disaster. Okay, so that's how the same pattern fits me a year later. Okay, so see how not nice that is? So basically I'm showing you this because, you know, I had a pattern that fit and then I completely changed the shape of my body from hiking and losing weight and now that's what it looks like. So my shorts are doing much better, so I'm going to have to refit my pants um, pattern as well. But I just wanted to show you that if you get a perfectly fitting pair of pants and then you make a significant weight difference, it can totally throw your, your pants off. So I just wanted to share that with you because I was kind of shocked. I thought I was going to sew together my um, pants pattern and it would be like just a little bit too loose and I could just fix it. But I'm not even going to play with that. I'm going to keep with my... You know, when I go to make my pants, um, I'll start with some of the dimensions from my shorts. But anyway, so that's that's that little thing. Oh, Janie says her first pattern was the happy pants. Excellent. Okay. All right, so let me get over here to my front leg. And this is what we're going to use to create a front pocket. And normally... I show how to make a standard jeans style front pocket. I'm just going to dash it in here so you can see. This is one of my go-tos where I'll sort of draw, you know, a little traditional jean pocket. Like, oh, you can't really see that. Hold on. Like a jean pocket like this, something like this. Okay. So that is a lovely pocket. It's very popular in jeans and pants. And if you'd like to create a pocket like that, you're going to create a shape similar to this. Um, one thing I want to point out is wherever your grain line is on your pants or your shorts, try to keep your front pocket opening on that side because proportionally that looks good. All right, so that is a popular um, shape but we're going to try something different today. So I am going to just erase this. And I'm going to I'm going to take that off because I've done that a million times. Instead, what I want to show you is why don't we make a slash pocket? Slash pockets are another very popular um, pocket for pants. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my seam allowances okay so I have them now if you have a safety seam allowance on your side seam like some of you um, I might have recommended after you cut out your I mean I'm sorry after you you know start tracing your size to add an inch safety seam allowance because then you can let it out if you were scooping so just make a note of whatever seam allowance you have here my pattern just has a half an inch so I'm gonna just mark my half an inch and I'm just going to mark it like right along the edge of my, you know, just so I have it. I'm just going to mark it down like that. And then I'm also going to mark it across the top. And the reason why I'm doing that is because that space where your seam allowances are, um, the, you know, that's going to be taken up by the side seam and the waistband. So it's always good to make note of where that is. So to do a slashed pocket, I think what I'm going to do, let me just, I'm just gonna make this a little bit neater here. Okay. All right, so there's my side seam. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to measure from my side seam edge I am going to measure, I think, two inches. Okay, so that's where the opening of my slash pocket is going to go to. 
Um, let me just see here. Francine says, my first pattern was the women's tea pattern. I love the technique of slashing to give more ease. Oh yes, the tea was my very first um, pattern. And I have to say, I think that is still my most popular pattern. Um, there's so many things that you can do with it that it, it is a very fun pattern to work with because you can do a lot of different design things because there's a bunch of different pieces. Um, that is a good one. Okay, so then I've got my width of my um, slash pocket. Then I'm going to go down along my side seam. I'm going to decide how long um, I want the opening to be. And I think what I'm going to do is have it be, you know, maybe, let's see. Let's have it go down, why don't we say five and a half. I'm going to make a, a, five, uh, a guide at five and a half here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to just create a slash here. And I'm slashing from, I mean, I'm drawing my opening from my, my stitching line to my stitching line, okay? So basically, this is going to be something like, let's do something like this. Okay, so that is a little slash opening, and if I sort of include my seam allowance, my seam allowance will be below it, so it will get a little bit wider, and I'm going to sew my pieces together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so if I dash this in, I'm just going to do this so you can see. Okay, so there is my actual stitching line. So I've made note of the opening, and I've made note of my stitching line for my front pocket opening. Okay? Um, let me just see. Mary says, um, oh, Mary says that she doesn't know how to comment on Instagram. Um, I have an account, but I've never used it. Well... Mary, you are officially entered underneath the YouTube. If you find me on Instagram, you can just click the little bubble that's shaped like a, you know, like a little comment bubble right under the picture, and that's how you comment. Um, but you're definitely entered to win here because you commented, so, so yay. Oh, and I just want to give you guys a Facebook update. Um, someone in the short sew along emailed me and asked me if I could do a short Facebook group, you know, just for people sh sewing shorts so we could interact together. And the reason why I'm not starting a new Facebook right this second is because when I started a new account under my full married name, Jennifer Stern Haseman, um, all of my suggested friends are Vietnamese. And it just makes me nervous because it was Vietnamese hackers that um, took over my account. So what I did was, um, I was talking to my social media manager about this whole situation, and um, apparently when you apply or comment or report something wrong online, it's primarily a bot that's with artificial intelligence looking at those reports and looking for keywords um, to handle the majority of what happens when you file a report. So I wrote a physical letter and I was able to scroll down um, on that Thai Bui gaming page that is my page that they took over and back in 2012 you can see my sewing posts. They took the pictures down but the posts are still there. So I took some screenshots of that as well as some other proof and like the history of the page and some other things and I provided some other proof and my driver's license and all that other stuff um, and I mailed them priority mail a letter so I'm hoping if a real person reads the letter they may restore my account because I'm not feeling comfortable on Facebook when I don't know a single Vietnamese person and all my suggested friends are Vietnamese that makes me feel like my new account is somehow attached to the one that got hacked, probably because of the IP address. But the bottom line is I'm hoping that now that I sent a physical letter, my Facebook account will get restored to me. Um, 
Okay, Diane said, Hi everyone, sorry late, can't start sewing until next week. Currently have military gear spread out all over sewing area as our daughter deploys again tomorrow. Uh, well, I am sending prayers for a safe deployment and return home, Diane. And no worries about sewing because we're not sewing today. Today what we're doing is we are designing a front pocket. And Liza says she likes slash pockets, so that's what we're doing. We're making a slash pocket. I'm showing you how to do that. Um, and then we're going to start sewing next week, so you're not going to really miss any sewing. Um, we are having a second fitting, Zoom fitting on Sunday, and I tested the original Zoom link, and it works. So I'm going to find that link, and I'm just going to use that to open up Zoom at 11 o'clock um, Eastern Daylight Savings. Um, Um, oh, Mary, okay, wait a minute, let me just finish this. So, so that's what we're doing. And also, Diane, make sure you comment here and on my Instagram of what your favorite pattern is because I'm having a free giveaway because I reached a thousand subscribe, a thousand followers on my um, Instagram. Oh, Peachy says, I have trouble choosing between your T pattern or your dress patterns. Well, guess what, PG? You're entered. So good luck, and maybe you'll win, and then you can pick one out. Um, and Mary says, I got to your account, but there's no bubble. Let me just show you. All right, so here is my Instagram. So if I go to my Instagram, okay, this is what it looks like. See, there I am. Ooh, I have a 1,002 followers now. This is so exciting. All right, so if you click on the picture of me and my friend Becky wearing my skirt, that's the post that the contest is under. And then see right here, there's a little bubble. That's where you click, that little bubble right there. Um, so click on that, and then you can leave a comment. Oops. So you click on that, then you can leave, oops. You can leave a comment. Okay, and then you just say which pattern there. So that's how you do it. Okay. So yay, this is me and my friend Becky in Florida. All right. So that was a little mini tutorial on how to go on my Instagram and comment and like all my posts. <laughs> all right. Okay, so that's my report about Facebook. Keep your fingers crossed that um, it gets restored to me because then I will start a new group and so on and so forth if I can get my original account back. Um, all right, so oh, Kim likes the Abbey dress pattern. And Mary says, okay, thanks, excellent. All right, so let's get back to our slash pocket here. Okay, so once you've designed your um, front pocket opening, the next step is to design your pocket bag. And this, my front fly is really going to come down a little bit lower. Like I'm going to make this a little bit longer on my real pair. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line from the bottom of my zipper seam allowance to my side seam so that it's at least a couple inches lower than the bottom opening of of the front pocket opening now for me my my front pockets are are just for um, decorative purposes i never put anything in my front pockets because i already have a big belly there to fill them up so i never use my front pockets but i do like to have my pocket bag attach at the zipper seam allowance and at the side seam okay so that creates like a nice tummy support or control panel because you've got extra layers of non-stretch fabric there. So I'm drawing a diagonal line down to here, and then I can create a one-piece pocket bag. If you'd like to have a functional pocket, then you're going to need to create a two-piece pocket bag, and I'll show you what that means. But basically, if you want a pocket that's functional, you know, put your phone there, you know, or put your hand there see how deep you want that pocket to go because these are your pants and you want to 
Um, yeah, see, Mary says she uses she does use her pockets for her phone and for her keys, so you do need to make it deeper. So if you want a usable pocket, you know, find where the base of that is going to be. Okay, somewhere down there maybe. Okay, and then you can, um, if you want it to connect to your front, you can then draw yourself a curved line from the base of your zipper, you know, like this, and then sort of curve it back the other way to create a pocket shape like this. So let me just um, highlight that in a color so you can see the two different versions. So for me, this this dashed line is going to be my one-piece pocket bag. This is going to be a folded edge, folded edge, okay, versus this pocket bag. Okay, this pocket bag is going to be a two-piece pocket bag, and we're going to have to sew that bottom edge. So those are the two choices. Um, okay, so let me see. Front pocket is usually only for tissues. Yeah, <laughs> tissues. Oh my gosh, my mom, I know you guys might have heard me say my mom has um, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and she's turned um, folding up her tissues into an art form. So whether we're eating and she has a paper napkin or if she has her tissue, she likes to fold it up into all these different shapes. And she has folded up tissues in her all her pockets and she leaves them everywhere that she sits. And it really is, I think she really is like, you know, she really, she's fascinated by folding up tissues now. And she loves to make very neat folded tissues. So. My mom needs pockets to put her tissues in. So, all right, so let me just see here. Um, oh, yay, all right, so Barbara said, I just followed you on IG, love the tea pattern, wonderful. I hope you said that over there too, Barbara. And then Diane said, hi, Jen, thanks for Instagram. Toot, I just commented for the first time. I love it. Thank you, ladies. Make sure you comment over here, too. Anyone who went to Instagram to say what pattern they like, like it here, too, because you have two chances to win then. All right, so here is my two different pocket shapes. And what I'm going to do is I am going to... I have a finished... Um, a finished pocket bag for um, a different version that I made here um, and it was a little bit different shape the one that I did here just went straight across like this okay but you can see that it becomes a one-piece pocket bag so this is what I'm talking about about my one-piece pocket bag um, so I'm going to show you how to do this and I'll also show you just quickly how to make a two-piece pocket bag as well if you want a longer um, you know a longer pocket bag Oh, Mary made a comment. Yay, Mary. That's exciting. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to use, I have a bunch of patterns that, um, that I've been working with and, uh, oh, well, I'm just going to use a new piece of paper. I was going to try to recycle, but I don't want to have different lines on that. So let me just get a piece of paper here. All right. I should have had this cut out already. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to use this paper to make my pieces. Here's what you do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is let me show you how to make a 
one piece pocket and I'm going to just make myself a folded piece of paper. I think this will be fine. Let me see. I hope it's wide enough. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a folded piece of um, your pattern paper and you're going to pin it to the line that you drew on your front leg. And just to keep it from moving around, I'm going to pin it down here. So I'm just going to pin it to the line like this. All right, then I'm going to turn it upside down so you can see the outline of the pattern. So I'm going to trace this, and I'm going to trace it in red so it's nice and bold here. So you're just going to trace the shape of the, the top. I want to make it nice and bold so you can see. All right, so I traced it. And I can see through, um, I can see through now. So what I'm, so I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it through this way too. All right, so basically I have this nice traced pocket. Now this, this side that's right here, we're going to leave this side alone. Okay, so I'm going to unpin this for a second and I'm going to unfold it. Okay, and now that I've unfolded it, I'm just going to put the pins back. I don't want to slide that folded edge off of that line I drew. So I'm just going to pin it back. And the next thing I'm going to trace is my front pocket opening. Um, I think you can see that. Um, and let me just answer some questions here. Um, oh, Diane's favorite pattern so far is the T, getting ready to try the skort. Well, <laughs> I live in skorts. I am so excited for spring and summer to be here because I am going to be really skorting it up. Plus, um, in June, I am teaching a swim skirt class for stitches at home, and I'm going to be using the skort pattern to make a swim skirt. So I'm very excited about the skort pattern. Um, Jerry says, where did you get that great pattern paper? Okay, so this is called, this paper is called um, either dotted paper or alphanumeric paper. And if you go online, you can find it tons of places. I happen to get mine from Panda Trim, but you can get it from Steinloff and Stoller. You can get it from um, lots of different places. So what you want to do is you want to look for... Um, you know, different size rolls. I buy it by 100 yards because I use a lot of paper. And I get 48 inches wide. You can get it 36 inches wide. You can get it 60 inches wide. So you can get any width you want and you can get various um, size rolls. If you don't do a ton of pattern work, I think Steinloff and Stoller sells it by 10, 10 yard rolls, which is a little bit more manageable if you just need it every so often. But it is very cool because you can see here... I use the grid to keep my grain line straight. So it is a really helpful paper when you're drafting. Um, okay, so are you guys good? Panda trim or I can say um, paper, oops, paper at panda trim, you know, I think it's pandatrim.com or Steinloft and Stoller in New York City. They're in the garment district. So those are two places to get paper. Um, okay. Plus it's a little bit lighter weight and you can see through it. That's the other thing. Alright, so I think you can just see my pencil line here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just trace my pocket opening here. I'm going to make my seam allowance and my pocket opening. Okay, so that's my pocket opening right there. All right. So now that I have those things traced, I can unpin my pocket bag from the pattern. And what we're going to do here is, the reason why I drew 
my little seam allowance there is because I'm going to go straight across like this. That's where the seam allowance for the pants, I mean, that's where the seam allowance is going to stop. Because basically now, to cut this out, I'm going to cut it out like this. Oh, and I'm going to cut it out here. And then I'm going to cut straight across like this. All right, so that gets rid of the top. And then you can see my center front is on an angle. And the reason why it's on an angle is because I made my line on my pattern at an angle. So you can see, because this line is on an angle, that creates an angle here. Okay. All right, so here's my pocket bag. And the way I laid it on my pattern... Um, the way this is going to work now is this is going to be, and this is kind of important. So what you're going to do is on that fold, just make yourself a little dashed line so you know that that's where you're going to fold it. Okay, so that's my fold. And there's my fold. And um, the other thing is, this is going to be the right side of the fabric, right side fabric. And so that means the printed side is going to be the wrong side. And this here's why this is important. Let me explain this to you. Um, let me get my leg back here. Okay, so what's going to happen is when you go to sew this on, oh, and then, and here's why you want to do a master pattern, because after you trace this off, you're going to get rid of this little piece. Okay, so that's now gone. That's why you always want to keep your master pattern ready, because now you've got a pocket cutout. Okay, so the way this sews together, just so you can see, you match here, and you're going to sew your seam allowance to sew to finish this edge and then you're going to turn it to the right you know after you sew it you're going to turn it to the wrong side like this right so let's pretend this is sewn okay so that's sewn on and that's a finished edge well then what happens is the the, the rest of the pocket folds up to match like this and that's how it completes the pants. Now, this is your pocket fabric, right? So whatever you use to cut out your pocket bag with, we don't want to see that in your actual shorts unless you want to see it. I mean, there are cases where, and I've seen this even in Ready to Wear, where that whatever pocket fabric is used also shows on the right side. In that case, you can just leave it. But in most cases... We are going to want to create a fabric facing that's we can sew a piece of the shorts fabric onto the pocket bag so it keeps that from showing. So the easiest way to do that is, when you've got this folded right, Okay, you're then going to just trace, I'm just going to dash in the front pocket opening like that, and I can unpin this. Okay, so this is my, this is the opening, but remember it's also um, a half an inch bigger than that, or three eighths bigger, because, you know, we sewed it. So the next step is we want to create that facing shape, and I'm just going to use my pencil for this. So you want to have at least two, two and a half inch overlap. So basically I'm just going to follow along the shape of my slash pocket here at two and a half inches and then I'm gonna measure down probably just two inches at the bottom we don't want it to go lower than our our halfway point here but you basically want to just create something that's kind of like that that mirror images or mirrors the shape not mirror image but sort of echoes the shape of your front pocket opening like this okay then what you're going to do is you're going to trace a copy of that. So if I put this paper right here, 
and I trace that. Let's trace it in red. You know, and you can be, this could be any shape. You know, you just want it to be a similar shape to your opening. Okay, so there's the shape of my fabric facing. So I'm going to cut this out. So something like this. Okay, so this is the right side of the fabric. You're going to cut two. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this. Now remember, this is the right side of this, right? And because we folded it up, we know that this piece needs to go right here. So you're just going to clean finish the edges of this with a three thread narrow. That's my favorite thing to do. And then you can just top stitch it on or sew it on like a patch. So I'm just going to pin this. All right, so this is the one piece pocket. Okay, so that's how it looks when it's finished. Okay, so that's how you finish that. And, you know, it will be, you know, the first thing is you're going to put this right side down. Notice that your facing piece is, you know, there on the wrong side of your fabric. Okay, this is the right side. So when we sew it here, we turn it under, okay, and then from the wrong side, if I were just to pin this here quickly, okay, then you fold this up, okay, because here's our face, and you fold it up, and there is finished, see? And the best part is, Whatever print you use, this is the right side of your fabric, so it'll look pretty on the inside. So that's how you create a one-piece pocket bag. Um, and just keep in mind, you know, you can't really make this. I mean, you could make it really, really, you know, I mean, you could make a little bit more of a diagonal, but it starts to get crazy if you push this down too far. So if you wanted a deeper pocket, I'm going to show you how to do this now. Okay. Um... All right, so let's see. Oh, Mary says that also helps give you a little more support across the tummy. Yes, it does, and I am the queen of needing that right now, so I am really a fan of that kind of pocket. All right, so because I cut off, I cut off my pocket here, so I'm just going to put it back on for now to show you how to draft the other kind because I need that there. So you can see that when you fold that up, it fin finishes the... Um, side seam and waist edge of your shorts okay so to create to create a um, two-piece pocket bag you're basically going to do the same thing except you're just going to trace two separate things so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some paper here and I'm going to trace the whole entire pocket, including the side seam going all the way up to the waist, like this. All right, so this is the pocket bag for the two-piece pocket. Okay, and then I can take this off now. The next thing you're going to trace is the um, front pocket facing to finish, clean finish the opening. Let me just show you how to do that. So you're basically going to trace it again, but this time you're tracing the shape of the front pocket opening. Alright, so this is how you make the two-piece, okay, and the cool thing is, if your pocket opening is the same, 
then this piece is the same. So you would also create, you know, one of these to protect the view of that. So like if I were to cut this out, I'm just gonna cut it out so you can see what I mean. This will also work as a tummy control panel because it's it's sewed to the side and center front edges. Let me just cut out this one. Okay, so the import there's one important thing though I want to show you here. Hold on. All right, so let me get rid of all that extra paper. Okay, so this is your pocket bag. Um, oh, hi Sally. Sally says your pocket, I, I mean, now your pattern I want to make next is the T with the upper front panels. It looks like a great design. Oh, yay. That is a fun pattern. Plus, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but on last summer I showed how to make, um, I think I used that pattern to make a, um, um, you know, a, a cowl neck, I think. So there are some design options for that. Oh, I think I showed it on the Abbey dress, too. On my Instagram, the blue and white dress is the um, Abbey dress with the cowl neck. Um, that was fun. Okay, so here is the pocket bag. This gets sewn to here. So you would use the same piece, regardless of which style pocket. This would go right here. So again, clean finish it and then sew it onto the wrong side. This is the wrong side of the fabric because you want the right side of the fabric to show inside your shorts. Okay, so that takes care of that. Then the way this pocket goes together is the first step is you put right sides together like your traditional um, sewing thing. So this is wrong side face up. Wrong side face up. And you just sew here. So you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna sew. Sew that to there. You're gonna turn it to the wrong side and it's finished. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin that quickly. Okay, and then from the inside of your shorts, what you're going to do is you're going to take your completed um, pocket bag and you're just going to line it up. And here's what's really important. When you're designing a two-piece pocket bag, it's important that this bottom edge is exactly the same shape and length because that's how you sew it together. So your next step is you would pin this together I'll just make sure it's all matching up nice. Okay, so you pin. Okay, and then I go on the serger and I'll just serge this edge like this. And that fini finishes the bottom of the pocket. Then, in either case, whether it's whether you're working with the one-piece pocket bag or this two-piece pocket bag, then what you're just going to do is baste it along the waist and side edges to keep it laying flat. So that's how you design and construct the front pockets. Now next week, we're, I'm going to sew these with you. So if you're ready to go and you want to kind of sew along with me, next week I'm going to show you how to sew front pockets. Um, and... I don't know, I'll see how long that takes. I may do front fly as well, but just to show you the fly pieces, okay, that's the other thing you're gonna need. And basically, if you adjusted the rise of your shorts, then you need to adjust the fly pieces so they're the same length as the zipper seam allowance. And actually, the right fly, that's the wider one, and my fly pieces are rectangles. So basically, I have a two and a half inch wide and a five inch wide rectangle. Let me just show you here. 
So if I just very quickly draw myself, um, just gonna, okay, I'm just gonna measure two and a half inches, two and a half inches, like this, you know, and then I'm gonna do this. You just wanna make sure the fly piece is the same length as the zipper seam allowance. Oh, and notice, I'm gonna show you how to prep your pieces. You don't wanna cut anything off yet. So, but basically you have your, you know, you can compare the fly lengths to your zipper. And if you lengthen this, you're gonna to need to lengthen these. Okay, so make sure you do that. And again, I have two. One is it looks just like this, and the other one is five and a half, and you fold, I mean, I'm five inches, and you fold it in half for the right side. So basically, they're two rectangles like this. And I make my right fly piece, um, let's just, I used all my paper. I don't know why I don't keep these things. Um, let me see. Oh, here we go. Here's a, oh, no. I had a fly piece. All right, I don't know what I did with my other fly piece, but just know it's another rectangle and it's five and a half, five inches wide by the length. I make the right one just a little bit longer because then it will cover the inside. Let me just show you that. So I realize that these are jeans, but you'll get a good idea of what's happening here. Let me just push this out of the way for a second. I'm going to turn these inside out so you can see. Okay, so this is what I'm showing you here. And actually, you can see that I made a, um, a very similar shape. Except I didn't. I made the um, uh, I made the length that actually caught into the center front much shorter here, but you could make it go all the way down to the base of your zipper, like I showed. But that's how that pocket's finished, like that. And then the right fly piece, you can see it's wider, and it's folded in half. Um, I make that so it's like a quarter inch longer than the left fly piece. That way, when it's all constructed it covers the zipper it covers the left fly piece and it makes this very nice and neat finish like that so that's basically the style of the two-piece pocket bag with um, the fly okay so that's how my flies are rectangular um, I so what I'm saying is okay so make sure for next week if, if you are sewing along with me you're gonna cut out your shorts your pocket pieces and cut out your fly pieces too because I'm if depending on how fast I sew together the front pockets I might do the zipper all in the same um, class only because I don't want this so long to last until August so I may combine front pocket and zipper in one class next week okay so that's how you design your front pocket so another good tip is to you know, after you design your pieces, I would basically just pin them on to your your front leg so they don't get lost. That's sort of a little management tip. Um, let me see. Oh, Diane says one of my favorites is um, everybody's shorts. Francine says, guess I'll have to wait if we make modifications to the front piece of the shorts before drawing pocket pieces. Um, is the left fly piece folded in half too? No, your left piece is literally just two and a half inches by the length of your fly. The right one is doubled, so it would be folded in half and it would be the same size, same width, but then I would add an extra quarter inch to the right piece, but it's, it's five inches. Okay, so that's the right piece folded in half. And the reason why the right piece is folded in half is because you see you see both sides of it. So let's look at this more carefully here. Okay, so see how this is the right piece when it's sewn in. You can see it here. 
and you can also see it here. So it's folded in half, so it's got it's on the right side, inside and out, versus your left fly piece. After you sew the zipper to it, it gets sewn down by the front fly detail. So you can see in the front here, this front fly is sewn through the left fly piece um, and the front of your shorts or your jeans or your pants. So that's a single layer because you only see the right side here. The wrong side of that single layer is up against the wrong side of the shorts or the jeans. So that's why this one's only two and a half inches. This one's five inches. And the other thing to consider, the reason why I make my left fly piece two and a half inches wide is because you really want your top stitching for your fly to be supported by that double layer of fabric. So if you want to make a wider fly um, or whatever it is, you just want to make sure you can stitch through, you know, both layers. Okay, so I hope I answered that for you, Francine. And it's okay if you have to wait. Um, I'm going to guess by Sunday we will have you all set. So I hope you're coming on Sunday to the Zoom fitting and we'll get your shorts fitted the rest of the way and then you'll be able to cut out your pieces or design your front fly pieces. And certainly if you have questions about drafting your front pockets, come to the Zoom meeting on Sunday if you can because I'll help you with that as well. Okay. All right, so we have all our pieces now. Um, the one piece we don't, we didn't talk about now is the waistband. Now the waistband is, it's either going to be a straight strip of fabric that can be on the bias, or it's going to be a contoured waistband depending on your shape. Um, and during the zoom fitting, I showed people how to shape a waistband by darting out the extra along the center back and back edges. Um, and then you're, we're going to make a paper pattern piece for that. I will show you how to do that, um, you know, once we finish, like once we finish sewing, um, or maybe next week I'll show how to draft that, um, that waistband piece. But to, to sew everything before the waistband, we have all the pieces we need. And what I want to do is show you here. Here are my, um, my pieces for my shorts. And I just want to show you, I like to use a three thread narrow to finish all the edges. So when I go to sew, I don't have to go, you know, back and forth. So what you're going to want to do is after you finish fitting your, um, your pattern, you're going to want to cut out your pieces and just use a three thread narrow to finish all the edges. That way you won't lose anything while you're working. Um, some fabrics, especially if you're working with a linen, um, some linens can really fray fast. You can lose your seam allowance in a heartbeat. So you want to make sure you, you know, I did all the edges front and back. And, um, you know, I left my, I did, I sewed my darts first. So if you know you have a dart, I think it's easier to sew the dart and then clean finish. No, actually, that's a lie. I clean finished the waist first and then I sewed the dart. Um, but I left the dart in because I fitted it onto me and I just left that there. But I will be showing you how to sew darts as well um, when we do the back and the side seams on, on part four. So our plan for... The short, the short sew along is to um, get everybody fitted, or if you want help designing your front pockets, join me on Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't come until noon, that's okay, because literally, I think I was on Zoom for three hours last Sunday helping everybody, and I'm very happy to do that. So come when you can. Use the link that's in the PDF pattern on the assembly guide page. If you don't have the link, please email me and I will send it to you. And I'm going to use the same link as I used last week because I tested it, it works. So that's my report for now. I hope you guys are enjoying this short sew along. Remember to comment on which pattern you like or have sewed and also go to my Instagram and do it because you'll have two chances to win a free pattern. You have until Monday to do that, and then we will pick a winner. Two winners, actually. One for Instagram and one for YouTube. And, um, yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, 
Oh, Carol, you're going to rewatch Anxious to get some good fitting shorts. Carol, can you come on Sunday at 11 or 12 Eastern Standard Time to the fitting? Because I'm doing Zoom fitting. Um, and the Zoom link is in the PDF assembly guide page. There's a link. And it's an interactive PDF, so if you have it on your computer, you can just click on it and it will open the Zoom link. Um, oh, good. So Sally's coming. That's wonderful. All right. This is super exciting. I really, I'm having so much fun with these shorts. Um, oh, and you'll notice I didn't put the vent on the bottom of my shorts. This is my side seam. There's no, see, there's my hem. I didn't put the vent on there. I'm going to play with doing a vent on, with a separate piece of fabric to see how that goes. So if you're doing the vent, don't worry, because after we do the front pockets and front fly zipper, the vents will be the next week. All right. Yay, Carol will be able to come on Sunday. All right, I really welcome everybody to come on Sunday, even if you, even if you just want to stop in and say hi. It's a lot of fun because we can interact with each other. Um, okay. Oh, good. Kim says, I made your recommended, recommend, recommended pattern adjustments, and it turned out much better. Oh, good. That's wonderful. All right. Yay. All right, you guys. This was fun. Um, tonight is Abby's last volleyball game of their little short season. They did like a six-game conference season to make up for no regular volleyball in the fall. And in Connecticut they at Eastern they're letting us come to the game so I'm gonna go bake some goodies for the team and go watch volleyball tonight so I'm super excited about that <laughs> um, but anyway thank you guys for joining me um, please if you have questions you can email me you can email me pictures of what you're working on and I'll help you um, and I will see anyone who wants to join me on Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Savings Time um, yes, go Abby. Oh, just to say one more thing about Abby. Every week, the conference does a offensive and defensive player of the week across the whole conference. And the first week, now Abby isn't outside. She's front row. She's a um, left side hitter, outside hitter. And, but she plays all around, and she's actually probably better in the back row than she is in the front row, even though she's amazing as a hitter. So she got Defensive Player of the Week for the first week of the series, and then she got Defensive Player of the Week this past week, too. So it's been very exciting watching her play. Um, all right, so you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, chances are my Fit Tip Tuesday video will include a fitting tip for transferring I can tell you what it's going to be actually I know exactly what I'm doing um, sometimes you can make a boo-boo or not accurately transfer when you scoop your muslin onto your paper pattern so I'm going to show you another way to transfer scooping on your muslin onto your paper pattern on Tuesday so that's what my fit tip Tuesday is going to be next week um, so you might want to check that out too if you scooped in your muslin but anyway, I'm going to go now because I could probably keep rambling on, um, but I do want to go get some stuff to bake and do some baking. Um, so um, I will see you guys on Sunday, and have a lovely rest of your um, Friday, and have a happy weekend. Okie doke. Bye-bye.